Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox One S. It's got a bad HDMI. The story behind it is it fell while the HDMI cable was plugged in, hit the ground and pushed the connector in, immediately rendering it useless. No signal to the TV, so we're going to fix that. There are plenty of different methods to replacing the HDMI's. I'm not going to show you my favorite because I've shown that in previous videos, but I'm going to show you one that will help if you are a beginner and you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to replace the HDMI. After you do it a few times the way I'm going to show you, you may find it easier and you'll actually understand the concepts behind doing it. Some of the more challenging ways, but they're much quicker and cleaner. So let's get into the video. All right, I'm going to turn on my Rework station to about 450 Celsius. You can go up to 500 if you want. But I'm just going to go back and forth under the HDMI here until the solder melts so we can break it away. We want to make sure that this is hot enough so that we don't accidentally pull any of the pads. So basically I'm just going to wait to see good movement. Obviously this HDMI is almost sheared away from the board anyway. So if there are pull pads, they're already pulled and it's not something that I'm going to create. But there I can see it start to move. So we'll go ahead and we'll lift that up. And those pins are all messed up. But I don't see any pads on them. So that's a good sign. And the close up on those pads looks like they're all intact. Let's go under the microscope and take a look at it. All right, so here we've got all of the pads still intact. It looks like one of the pins might have broken off here on the very side. The through holes are still full. You can see some of the flux there. We're gonna do this. Um, this isn't necessarily my favorite way of doing these, but it will be the simplest for those that haven't done it before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some 138 solder paste or if I had a 138 solder wire, I would use it as well, or anything that's a low melt. And we're just gonna put down a little blob of it there and get out our soldering iron. I'm gonna set my iron to around 350 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to take this low melt, this 138, and we'll mix it into the legs of the factory solder. And this solder isn't designed for strength. So we will be removing it, but in doing this, it's gonna make it much easier to clean out those holes. We'll also mix it with the solder that's on the pads. And it's okay that I used a lot because we're gonna really, really try to combine the solder in these holes with it. And the more you have to mix, the more it dilutes the high temperature factory solder inside these holes. And if your iron is small enough, you can actually kind of wedge it down into the holes a little bit. Just don't, don't spread the holes, like don't, uh, if it doesn't fit, don't try to force it. And if your iron is struggling to handle this, you can always increase the temperature. I'm going to flip over the board. We'll add some flux and we'll try to heat up from this side and pull that solder through to the factory solder that's on this side. If your iron tip gets too oxidized, it's gonna have a hard time transferring the heat. So dab it off and then you can see I'm able to pull it up and through just like that. Now we'll get out some solder wick and we're going to try to suck up as much of the solder as we can out of these holes. Not gonna all come out this with this technique and that's okay. When it kind of fills in, and kind of goes down too far, you can take the iron push it in there and you'll actually pull it back up to the surface. That way you can wick even more. We'll get some new wick out so it'll absorb more. We'll jump over to the other side that we will suck up as much as it'll let us. That one went almost all the way through on both sides. So we're gonna stick the iron down in there, melt the solder, pull it up, do the same on this side. And then we can go to suck it up again. This way you don't have to use a rework station and an iron and the wick all at the same time. It's not as fast per se, but it does give you a little bit more control. All right, those ones are pretty clean, not perfect, but let's go back over to the other side and let's persuade these ones to come out a little bit more. There, that one's pretty clean. There's some flux still down inside there. 
Now we'll get out some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Let's clean up the burnt flux. Now let's flip it back over. Let's take the iron. And it's okay if I put some in the holes again. It's just gonna mix with the stubborn uh, solder that was in there. We're gonna wick it again from this side and really clean those holes out. All right, we'll get some wick out. We're gonna just wick up the pads and we'll suck out the solder from the holes. All right, and we'll clean up the flux. And when it's all said and done, you should have a nice clean area to work with. With no solder in the holes and no extra solder in the pad, on the pads. Get a better angle on it. This is what you're looking for. You're looking for clean holes through and through. This will allow you to install the new HDMI exactly where you want it. All right, so we'll get out our new HDMI. And you can see it easily slides down in without any issue and rests exactly where we need it to. All right, coming in from above, you can see that there's quite a bit of wiggle room that allows us to line this up exactly where we want it. Now what we're gonna do, we will take some flux and those pins are resting against those pads in such a way, like the idea is that you want them to be making such good contact without solder that there would be connection or continuity between the pin and the pad. In theory, that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna take some solder paste. This is some 183, and we'll just put a nice little bead out in front to that we'll be able to feed from with our soldering iron. Take out our iron, and everyone has their own technique for this, but basically what I like to do is just drag and drop a little bit on each one of the pins, just like that. Drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. And that way you go one by one, making sure that you've uh, definitely soldered each pin individually. You can always add more solder if you need it. Typically this is sufficient. You can even flip your iron around and come in from the side and, and just drag like this. The issue with doing it that some sometimes you'll end up with a bridge. So you do one at a time, you'll, it's like I've never really had a bridge if I do it one at a time. So now that I've gone over each one of those pins and individually just made sure that they're all making good solid connection, that there's plenty of solder on them, what I'll do is I'll take some flux over to the legs, that, and now I'm going to take some solder wire. It really doesn't matter what it is as long as it's not a low melt. You want to have a somewhat of a strong joint here. So we'll put the iron down in there, let things get nice and toasty, push the solder into the iron, and we'll let a good amount flow down just like that. Do the same on the second one, just adding a little bit of solder at a time, getting it nice and hot, letting it melt. Adding more solder to the tip, like so. We'll come into the other side, get it nice and hot. Let the solder flow down into the hole. Doing the same on the last leg here. Now when we flip it over, you'll see that the solder has not traveled all the way through the holes, right? There's solder in there, but not, not enough. So I'm just gonna add some flux on the holes like this. Now the last thing that I like to do, instead of just applying more solder from below with the soldering iron, because I have plenty of solder on the top, We'll take our hot air again, and we'll come back just like we would if we were removing this. And we're gonna heat up the bottom. What'll happen with that little flux that we put down there, and the heat we're applying, the solder's gonna melt. It's gonna suck down through the hole, encapsulate each one of the legs in, a, in all of the solder that I've applied, and it's gonna secure the legs just like a factory solder job. So we'll heat it up, and when it gets hot, the solder, you'll see it kind of Go from that blob that, that's there, add a little bit of flux to make sure that it really flows. Now that it's warm, we should see it really start to move here in a second. And just like that, we no longer have a blob. And we take some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just going to clean up the flux, and then we can examine how it looks. So in the end, what you're looking for is plenty of solder going through the legs, each one of the pins having plenty of solder running up to it without bridging. And when we flip it over and look at the back side, that one doesn't have a pin that comes all the way, a leg that comes all the way through, but the other three do. And you can see that there's plenty of solder. Could clean up the flux a little bit on that last one, but the solder's coming through just like the factory. All right, there we have our new HDMI all installed looking really clean, really good. All of the pins making solid contact without any bridging. Gotta put it together.
so we can test it. But hopefully that helps you understand some of the basics uh, for microsoldering. If this is your first time trying an HDMI, hopefully that helped. Now for those of you that are wondering, my favorite method is to extract the HDMI with heat and while it's still hot, install the new one without having to add any additional solder. You may have to add additional flux, but if you do it just right, you can actually lift it off and put it on. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but it's much easier than the entire process that we just went through once you have the skills to do it like this. And you'll understand why as you do that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe for more future videos like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And for those of you that were wondering, for those of you that were wondering if it's working, there we go. Here's the Xbox One.